Hi everyone, my name is Skylar Eiswitz. Today I'll be talking about my project, The Hall Effect in a Dusty Plateau, a charge gatherer of flow with relevance to planetary rings. Saturn's rings are composed 99.9% of ice particles, 0.1% of impurities. All these rings get collisionally charged by orbit, and it is known that Saturn's E ring is a dusty plasma. Thanks to the vast amount of data received from Cassini spacecraft, it's the most studied planetary ring system, but the dynamics of the particles are still unclear. Heavy particles are dominated by gravitational forces, so they move in fairly accurate Keplerian orbits, but it's interesting to study how um, small particles deviate from these orbits. We're looking into the Lorentz force, and consequently, the Hall effect. So the Hall effect is usually typically found in semiconductors. If you have a semiconductor bar, you apply a voltage difference, so you have a current going one way. If you apply an external magnetic field, you get this um, Hall effect voltage edge to edge on the opposite direction. What we're postulating is that the Hall effect is happening in Saturn's dusty plasma rings. So here's a simplified um, picture of Saturn's rings. We have charged particles. Um, they get collisionally charged, as we know, and they're in Saturn's magnetic field. They feel the magnetic field perpendicular to their velocity. So they feel the Lorentz force, and as a result, positively charged particles are pushed inward, negatively charged particles are pushed outward. This happens until an increasing radial electric field increases enough to produce an electric force equal and opposite to the magnetic force. Um, so the Hall effect, usually found in semiconductors, never found in a dusty plasma. This would lead to the mentioned radial electric fields and also various other phenomena to be studied. So we built an experiment to, to demonstrate the Hall effect in dusty plasma. But to model the grains, I use expanded polystyrene particles. They get very easily collisionally charged. And this means just by knocking into each other, they exchange charge. And as you can see, through static electricity, they're attracted to my hands, they get attracted to my hair, you name it. it it's very annoying. OK, so this is my experiment to set up. The ring-like structure is where these particles uh, brush around. So there's an opening for air right here. The particles go up and around, and the vent holes up here they have a mesh so that air wants to rush out, but the particles come shooting down into what I call my test section. And at my test section, I have two copper plates side by side over here. They're hooked up to electrodes where I have a digital multimeter record data about one second of the voltage difference. Um, this whole setup is effectively an equivalent circuit where um, the two huge metal plates are like a capacitor and then the input impedance of whatever measuring device, including the wires that I'm using. This all affects the data I'm collecting. So to measure the Hall effect, I put this whole setup in between two electromagnets, and these are two big Helmholtz coils, so there's one big red ring in the front, and there's also another red ring in the back that we can't see. Um, you turn on the air down here, and then we get a charge down in the flow. Um, the maximum field is 0.2 Tesla, Here's Rosie the Riveter, and for some inspiration, we hope to see a voltage difference. But what we found out is that this is a very complicated system. We have a turbulent flow of air, and these particles get um, very rapidly collisionally charged, knocking its plates. There's also transient, um, transient responses that complicate results. So here's an example of a good result, but it's, it's hard to reproduce. So this is a good result because with no field in the red, we have um, no, like, it's uh, hugging zero, but then when we turn the field on, we get a significant voltage difference. So, um, because we, if we take a look and zoom on just one um, polystyrene particle, because they like to just um, cling onto walls, that means they're fighting gravity. So it's safe to assume that the electrostatic force is greater than gravity. If we do a force balance, we can get an estimate on Q, and so we know they're getting charged. Um, but this is a lot of charge, we have to take into account their mass. If we get the charge to mass ratio, we see that on this scale, compared to the electron and proton, this is not significant. Um, why is why this important? If we look at the gyro radius, which is just setting the Lorentz, the Lorentz force equal to the centripetal force, we're looking for the radius here we get an order to the magnitude of 10 to the fourth meters. This is a problem because this is not enough, they, um, the particles don't have enough time to travel this distance in the third amount of um, field they're in. So, 
This isn't to say that interesting things didn't happen with my setup. If we zoom into the scale of tenths of milliseconds, here's a voltage first time graph, um, we get charge avalanches. On the right hand side of the y axis, I convert this voltage to a charge using Q equals CV, and we think this is how the charges are depositing their charge onto the plates. Zooming in even more to the scale of hundreds of nanoseconds, we get uh, what we're seeing here is the particles depositing charge rapidly and emitting radio frequency waves just like lightning. This is interesting because um, Cassini has, has brought back data of powerful lightning storms in Saturn's rings. So in conclusion, um, I'll fully accept that I won't understand everything about my system, but improvements can be made. I can try to improve more consistent results with the standard operating procedure. Um, I can improve controls, for example, controlling humidity and the velocity of the particles. And also rethinking with gravity matter. This could mean just um, using smaller particles so that would decrease mass and increase charge a lot. Um, and I think looking forward, it would be interesting to have um, calculations and experiments directly related to Saturn. And what this could mean is rapidly shooting ice chunks and measuring their cube around. I mean, that would be cool. Thank you.